What's the word, y'all? NBA trade season is here, and I am so excited for it. Cam Red is going to the Knicks. We're going to talk about that in a second, man. NBA trade season is some of my favorite times of the year. You would think it would be the finals or the season opener or just the playoffs in general. Absolutely not. I'm here for small trades, big trades. I'm here for free agency. I'm here for the draft. Anything that we could get a team to look a little bit different, I'm here for. I'm just always fascinated on the process of making a trade and trying to figure out did somebody get fleeced who won this trade is this small trade going to contribute to a team winning a championship in three years down the line i love going to basketball reference and looking at like the lineage of trades where like a team traded a draft pick and, and the draft pick doesn't convey to six years in the future then that pick ended up being this guy who got traded for this guy and this guy and this guy and it took a decade for this one trade to matter and boom that trade 10 years ago, played a part in the championship. Now, it's all crazy, and I, not, I absolutely love all of it. I'm a little bit afraid, though, that this um this trade deadline might be a all-bark, no-bite trade deadline, just because when you talk about health and safety protocol, you talk about injury history, this might be a year where teams are kind of hesitant to package in a few players and some picks to get one player return, because now we're in the playoffs, and, oh, man, I just had three people on my team have a little outbreak, and now they're out for five to ten days, and now we don't have the depth to compete because we traded the depth away, and then there are so many teams that are still competing for a playoff spot. I mean, with the play in, it seems like every team still has a chance halfway through the season to steal a spot. So who's going to be sellers? Who's going to be buyers? Who's going to be stamp put? I don't really know. We're going to talk about a lot of rumors today, but we're going to start off talking about the Cam Reddish trade because the Knicks came out of left field. And I think a lot of people's initial reaction was that the Knicks fleeced the Atlanta Hawks. Wow. The New York Knicks, if you do not know, they're getting Cam Reddish, Solomon Hill in the second round pick, and they sent out Kevin Knox in a protected pick. That is top 18 protected, and I think it's from the Charlotte Hornets or something. I don't really know. There had been a lot of rumors about Cam Riders over the past year or so about him being traded, and I think most people thought this was going to be the year for that, but I don't think most people saw it as we're going to give you a player that we don't even play anymore and a heavily protected first-round pick, and that was all that was going to take to get Cam Reddish. And if the price was that low, I kind of question, like, okay, see. I mean, I know they already got a million young players that are trying to develop, but OKC has a million first-round picks. You're trying to tell me they didn't want to take a stab at Cam Reddish if it was only if it was only a heavily protected first-round pick? Or what about the Sacramento Kings? The Sacramento Kings are a team that that their uh, general manager said, hey, we're not going to a full rebuild. If we're going to make trades, we make trades around the edges to get better right now. Cam Reddish could be a guy that can help you get better right now but still develop alongside the young dudes. But no, it was the Knicks. Which is so very interesting because, well, if you know Tom Thibodeau, he doesn't absolutely love playing young dudes. But obviously, you don't trade a first-round pick to get a guy that might be riding the bench. Cam Reddish is going to play minutes. I don't know if he's going to be big time, but minutes for the New York Knicks. Now, there is two different sides of the Cam Reddish camp. There are some people that that see that Cam can be a good player and see that the potential is through the roof. He was one of the top recruited guys out of high school. He got to Duke, then perform very well. He still ended up being a lottery pick. And he is a guy that shows flashes every once in a while that he could be an elite level talent in the NBA someday. But more likely than not, through his first two years of his career, it's been more negative than positive. And what I didn't know, because I always question, why do they got Cam Reddish and all of these trade talks, all of these trade rumors? He requested out several months ago, according to The Athletic. So they were doing right by him by getting a guy that didn't want to be in their locker room away. Okay, that makes sense. So maybe the reason why Cam Reddish went from a positive defender his rookie season to being one of those doors called with the two things that you see in ranches that open the door that people are just walking right past him. He just didn't really want to hoop. And do you see his stats when he's playing without um, Trey Young versus when he's playing with Trey Young or in that game against Chicago Bulls early in the season where he had almost 40? There are a lot of flashes that Cam Reddish could be a good NBA player. This season, he's shooting like 37% from three. So a lot of people see that Cam Reddish with the Knicks is worth the risk. I mean, you traded away a dude and, and Kevin Knox, who still might be building in Fortnite, and then a pick that was top 18 protected. That is nothing to you, especially if you believe that you can help Cam Reddish develop to the talent that he thinks he can be, which is the high school version of himself. I read a lot of articles about Cam Reddish today because I'm, I'm trying to get in tune. Um, he said that this one he wanted this year to be the year that he got back to himself, and that would be the high school version of him. The high school version of him was also like a point forward. I don't know if that's what the New York Knicks have planned for him, but again, it's a high risk, or not even a high risk. It's a low risk, high reward type situation. 
situation. And those are always my favorite kind of deals in the NBA. The Knicks are starting to get better and better right now. RJ Barrett is on the tear, and they went um on a what seven and three in their last ten. They're looking similar to last season. They were about this last season at this point. So who really knows? Cam Reddish could come in and maybe help them. But I'm not going to grade this for the Atlanta Hawks immediately. Just because from everything I read today, Travis Slink might have more things up his sleeve. Um, because they are trying, it looks like they're trying to stockpile assets for maybe a bigger deal. It's kind of kind of crazy. Me and the homies were talking about this in the party today that the Atlanta Hawks were just in the conference finals last year, and this year they look significantly different with the same roster, and they've been a lot worse. And now that we might be looking at a team that's looking to make a, a second and a third trade at the trade deadline when just a couple months ago they were competing to try to get into the finals. Where, where there's rumors that they are saying that everybody not named Trey Young and not named Clint Capella is available right now. They're linked to Ben Simmons. They're linked to Jeremy Grant. And it's, again, kind of crazy that they've, they've gone from a team that we saw super young and super promising to, hey, we shipping off one of our dudes and all of the other young pieces that we have on our team are not untouchable or they're, if, they're right, if the deal is right, we'd be willing to trade them. It's kind of wild. That's, the, that's how the NBA works, man. That's how the NBA works. I mean, there was a log jam at the wing position. They had Bogdanovich, Kevin Herter, DeAndre Hunter. The list goes on and on of playable wings. So you free up one spot and throwing Cam Reddits to another team. So we'll see what Travis Slake ends up doing with that pick or whatever players he got. And then we're going to package this trade with um, whatever trades and we'll grade them as a whole. But right now, I will say the New York Knicks won this trade, but we will come back. So I do want to go around some other trade rumors and stuff that we either on Bleach Report or the the athletic or the ringer i kind of compiled a bunch of different stuff in espn um and i kind of want to talk about it, and you let me know in the comment section what you think about these things as i'm talking about them uh kevin o'connor of the ringer says that if the charlotte hornets were to make a trade for miles turner the pacers want gordon hayward and i just absolutely hate that for the pacers i do I do. I absolutely hate. Not that Gordon Hayward's bad because this the other night he had like 30 points and he missed like one shot. Gordon Hayward is still a quality NBA player, but I am a firm believer that the Indiana Pacers should not be trying to move laterally and should be trying to level up or or either level up or reset. No in between. And this is a trade that's going to be like, ah, oh, we still okay enough to maybe make the playoffs, but that's just where they've been sitting for the last X amount of years. We thought that when they said they're willing to trade Sabonis or they're willing to trade Miles Turner, this means that they might be willing to hit a reset, but obviously the ownership over there is still thinking, hey, we need to get butts in the seats, and Gordon Hayward is from this area, and he went to school here, and we would love to have him in Indiana. And I guess they were close to signing him when he was a free agent a little while ago. I, I hate this, though. I hate the idea that Gordon Hayward might be going to Indiana, Indianapolis um, for Miles Turner because I would like for the Pacers to hit reset or think about young assets and not a 30-plus-year-old dude already, but I don't know. Let's talk about the Portland Trailblazers and Damian Lillard. I'm happy that he had a successful surgery on his abdomen. We knew that he was trying to play through these injuries since the Olympics and everything. We made a whole video about the um, Damian Lillard slump and, and what I thought it was, and I mentioned, hey, this man had an abdominal injury like a month ago. There's no way he was completely healed, so I'm happy that he finally decided to shut it down for at least a period of time and got surgery. So here are the things that I saw earlier today. He's going to be all for X amount of weeks, as people are saying six to eight, and he'll be reevaluated and they'll decide if he'll be back this season, depending on where they are in the standings. Hmm, very interesting. This seems like a back seat here where you allow some of your younger dudes and Nas Little and Anthony Simons to develop, and then you figure out everything else on the edges while you get Damian Lillard back, which this means that hey, we're gonna have a lottery pick. And guess what? Our our pick to this season is lottery protected to the Bulls. So we want that pick to convey. So let's continue to be bad. Let's go throw our CJ OB and let's go throw our Anthony Simon and lose a bunch of games. But we're gonna allow Damian Lillard to get back healthy. And the next season, some of these guys are developed. We might make some trades or, or getting rid of Yusuf Nurk, trade Yusuf Nurkic or trade Robert Covington, who can be a free agent this offseason. And look at what we have next season. I do not believe that Damian Lillard will play again this season. I could be wrong, but it just makes the most sense for him to get completely healthy while the franchise takes a back seat and maybe gets a top five pick and then they figure out what the heck they do after that. <sighs> the name that I don't want to talk about is Ben Simmons. I mentioned before, I just... Every update that we get for Ben Simmons is not an update. I guess him, Rich Paul, and Daryl Morey, and Elton Brand, they had a, a meeting or over, over lunch, and nothing happened. Wolves reported that they went to lunch, and nothing happened. That was a report. That was actually a report um, that they're trying to still get a Damian Lillard-type talent, James Harden-type talent with a Ben Simmons trade. And it was also reported that the price for Ben Simmons has gone up. How the he how is he more expensive now and the boy ain't played in 41 games this season? I don't understand it. Daryl Morey and Elton Brand, 
I am a, I do believe that they have to trade Ben Simmons this season because the way Joel Embiid is playing right now, I would hate to waste this season of Joel Embiid where he's playing with a bunch of players that are a solid roster for sure, but not good enough that, that's going to match Joel Embiid's output for, for them to be a quality enough NBA team for people to really think that they have a puncher's chance. So you holding on to Ben Simmons for an entire season to have him not play. Like, like Daryl Morey has said before the season started, we're not trying to waste Joel Embiid's time here, so we're willing to wait for seasons for Ben Simmons which doesn't make sense to me it doesn't you're not going to waste his time he's playing in the MVP caliber level right now and he might make it to the playoffs and just lose in the first round because he doesn't have um, enough talent around him there's rumors I think we talked about this yesterday they're trying to pair Tobias Harris's contract with the Ben Simmons trade I don't really know the 76ers have Daryl Moore who's a, a mad scientist we'll see whatever the heck happens a lot of the reports that I am seeing um, or rumors that I am seeing here have to do with the trailblaze because they're there are a couple of different ways that they can go. They can go full reset, and we already talked about that. But there's a report here that says that some people around the league see CJ McCollum as a negative asset. That's not great. And they're trying to figure out if Norman Powell is worth anything on the market. Uh, the Lakers are calling around the league to see if anybody wants Dwight Howard. What is the value of Dwight Howard in 2022? Who knows? It's not that it's not going to be anything that you want. They even offered two second round picks for Cam Reddish. Not enough, my guy. Not enough. I'm curious to see what happens because um Horton Tucker is eligible to be traded on the 15th, which is in two days. Will they will they trade him to his next team with a first round pick to try to you know get stronger and get better? Because right now sitting at 500 with a team that with championship aspirations. I don't know. Orlando said to be asking for a first round pick in return of Terrence Ross, Gary Harris, and Mobamba. I would be super surprised if anybody's given a first round pick for Gary Harris or even Terrence Ross at this point, just because they are in the last year of the deals. Not saying that Terrence Ross is isn't good enough to get a first round pick but with him just being on a one-year deal I would be surprised if some team is willing to give them a first round pick that's not like top 20 protector or one of those fake first round picks that convey to a two seconds and three years or so just so the fans can say oh we got a first round pick the Mo Bamba well, I could probably I could see a first round pick being dealt in that trade just because he's young I mean whoever trades for him is gonna have his bird rights to resign him to x amount of money and you just have him locked up while the other dudes are on the last year of the deals and Gary Harris is already making 20 million dollars so you have to have the salary to match it it would be wild and then and lastly, the Bulls. Kobe White believed to be available ahead of the impending rookie extension conversations this offseason. We'll see what happens there. I mean, those are all of the biggest trade rumors that I've seen so far today, other than Tommy Shepard saying on an interview on radio saying, I don't show my cards. So maybe the Wizards are out there trying to make some moves left to right. I don't really know. But let me know what your favorite rumor is. Maybe something I'd even touch on in today's video. I would be so mad if a trade happens between now and when I drop this video. Yeah, that would suck.